Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to make a video answering a question that I saw asked in the Next.js Discord about uh, routing and loading spinners. So I've got a little demo here. You might have seen this in one of my other videos, but it's a pretty simple inbox app. And every time we change the URL, uh, we show a little spinner here while we load some data and navigate the page. And uh, the question was about how while this is kind of the typical pattern in next apps, what if we wanted to eliminate that loading spinner? How would we achieve that? And so uh, I wanna walk you through how I would think about tackling this problem. So first we can see right here, this message page is loading its own data using SWR and it's doing that based on the message ID in the route here. As that changes, this will rerun, fetch the new message, and um, that's how this works. Now SWR has a cache, so we can see if we navigate to a message we've already visited, then uh, it renders instantly. And over here is the sidebar component, which is actually fetching the list of messages and rendering a link for each one. So uh, we basically kind of want something like this behavior where you know it navigates instantly once it's already loaded, uh, but we want that for all these, even if a message hasn't been loaded yet. So my first way of approaching this would be kind of the least disruptive way, which would be to just prime SWR's cache whenever the user hovers a link. So if we wanted to do that, we could come here to each one of these message links. Go ahead and add an on mouse enter prop right here. And this is kind of where we want to prefetch. So we can see here, uh, we see that every time we hover one of these links. Now to actually prefetch, uh, remember this is the data call that we make in our page component. So we basically want to prime SWR's cache for this key uh, whenever we hover this and that will prefetch the data for us. Now to prefetch, we don't call use SWR. We actually call mutate, which is another import from SWR. And we can see here the first argument is the key for the specific kind of entry. And so uh, we can just grab it from here. Now, instead of putting the current value of the ID from the URL, we want to put in the ID of whatever link was hovered, which we can see we have right here as message ID. And then the second argument is the actual data we want to push in the cache. Now, if I pop open my root app component, we'll see that we've configured SWR with a fetcher function that we can use you know, to pass in a URL and fetch some JSON. So it'd be nice if we could reuse that, that function we already have configured right here, and we actually can if we use the SWR config hook. This is going to give us uh, our configured fetcher function, which we can just use uh, right here. And we'll just pass in uh, this endpoint again right here. So uh, let's just give this a shot and uh, see how it works. Now you'll see down in our console, we do see prefetch and uh, our mock is telling us that we also hit the endpoint for the first message. So if I come here and click this, it should be instant and we see that it actually is. So uh, this is pretty cool. And of course, if we were to jump here really quickly, we'll still see that spinner. But kind of in the normal course of things, this is a pretty nice solution to this problem. You can get more sophisticated and prefetch any link that's visible on the page, the data for it. Uh, and it's nice how basically simple this code is and, and how little it disrupts everything. So I think this is a great first pass. Now we see we're doing a lot of fetching here kind of as we hover over these. So why don't we make this a little bit smarter and only prefetch if the cache is cold for this key. We can do that with the second argument. And uh, instead of just calling fetcher here, we'll actually put this inside of a new function, which will make async. And SWR is gonna actually give us the current value it has for this uh, cache key in its cache. So if we have any data, we can just return that. And if we don't, we can go ahead and return our fetcher just like this. So uh, if we refresh, we should hover this and see 
our mock response, hover two should see two, hover three, see three. But now if I go back over, we're not doing any unnecessary fetching. And if I click on these, uh, it all navigates instantly. Now, once we do navigate, you'll see these being refreshed. That's just SWR doing its revalidation behind the scenes, but we have eliminated kind of uh, the unnecessary eager fetches once we prime the cache at least once for all of these. Now, one problem with what we've written so far is uh, if we look at our message page, you know, it relies on uh, calling API messages slash ID. And in order to prefetch it, we have to call that here as well. So we have some duplication here. It'd be nice if, uh, you know, this ever changes that our prefetch logic would get the updates as well. So let's just come up here and do something really simple that will let us share this URL in both places. Let's just export a constant of message URL. And we basically want it to return this, but uh, this takes in a message ID. So let's make this a function that just takes in a parameter and returns this. Now we can uh, make this use message URL. And then we can come down here and use message URL right here. So here it's message.id. Let's throw this into a URL variable and then we can replace it right here and right here with URL. Now let's go ahead and clean this up. We can just use uh, one line right here. And uh, that's pretty clean. And now we're sharing that URL. You know, of course, in bigger apps, um, you might have hooks that are like use message and, and take care of a lot of this stuff. I'm just kind of taking a really simple approach and uh, it's not really dependent on SWR, kind of React Query, Apollo, any data fetching library you would use that has a cache that lets you manipulate it would let you do something similar to what we're doing here. But now we have a really simple way uh, to share this message URL to prime the cache and we're doing it on mouse hover. But as we've seen, if you were to click quick, uh, you could still see that spinner. So if it were up to me, the prefetch on hover, I think makes the right trade-off between code complexity and improving that user experience. But I do want to show you how I'd approach it if I wanted to actually prevent navigation until uh, the data was loaded on click. So let's go ahead and look at that now. First, we can change this to an on click. And this is going to give us a click event, which we can use to call prevent default. Now, what this is going to do is actually stop us uh, from navigating once we click any of these links. And this is basically going to give us an opportunity to call mutate before we navigate. So let's turn this into an async function so we can await this call to mutate. And then after, let's go ahead and push our href here. Since we're sharing it, we can grab this, put it into a variable called href and then we'll push this to the router. And so now, if we were to start on the home page and refresh, if I click, we don't ever see that loading spinner. Now we've taken away the on mouse enter, so we could add that back in, but just to show the point here, uh, we basically pause the app until the data is ready. And just like before, once we've already loaded it and the cache is primed, then the, the transition is instant. Now, uh, if I were to come to kind of my mocks here and change this delay, maybe down to something like 150, which, you know, maybe depending on your situation is, is a little more realistic for your data fetches. You know, this is actually a pretty good experience. Uh, a lot of native iOS apps, they don't really show loading states until something takes a certain amount of time. And so if you kind of get lucky here and your data loads quick, this is kind of an okay approach. But uh, again, depending on your situation, you know, it's, it's a good chance that you would actually want to show some feedback here because if this is taking 750 milliseconds and we're not seeing anything, it kind of feels like the app is broken. So let's fix that by adding some new state. I'm going to say pending set pending is some new uh, react state right here. Start off as false. And since this is an async handler, we can go ahead and set pending to true. And then after we await the prefetch, we can set pending to false. And now if we're pending, uh, we should be able to render something like a spinner down here. So uh, let's go ahead and make this an absolute and make this a relative. 
we'll put this on the right and we'll make this spinner size small. Now, if I make this inset Y zero and flex, this should kind of center this little spinner in the link. Let's add some padding to the right here so that we have a little bit of room. And now we have a little loading spinner on our links. We can go ahead and conditionally render this uh, if we're pending. So we'll say pending and and. And now when I click on these, let's move this over just a little bit with some padding, uh, we see a little loading spinner. And that's actually pretty cool because now when we click on this uh, and we're loading something, we can still see the old content. We don't just kind of see a useless spinner, which again, depending on your UI, could make more sense. Okay, so lastly, we've actually broken some native browser behavior here. If I hover our links, uh, we'll see the URL down here in the bottom. So they are links, they're rendering anchor tags, but if I command click on it, which you would expect to be able to do, it should open it in a new tab. You know, this is a link to the home page. I can command click and see it right there. So we've broken that and uh, that's because of this prevent default right here. And so an easy way to fix this is uh, we can come here and check if e.control key or e.meta key are being pressed. And if either one of those are, let's just go ahead and return. And so now I should be able to command click all these and we get the right behavior here, here, and here. So um, we fixed that behavior, but uh, this is another reason why I think the prefetch on hover is actually kind of the, the best balance here. As soon as you start calling prevent default in your, in your click handlers, you are treading into dangerous waters in terms of breaking native browser functionality. So you always want to be careful about that. But I still thought it was really uh, useful to go through this exercise and see what it would involve if you actually wanted to block uh, routing on the data fetch. Now, there's one more point I want to make before wrapping up this video. Uh, this approach that we have right here is actually still not handling every situation. And if I were to refresh, so we have a cold cache and uh, click a couple links quickly, well, you'll see we kind of have some funny behavior here. And uh, this is because we are not in control of multiple pending transitions. And so these links don't really know about each other. The click handlers aren't aware that other uh, transitions could be pending. If we really wanted to solve this, we would need some sort of uh, abort controller. Could be a way we could do this where uh, we push a stack of pending transitions. And if there is one, we cancel the last one and ignore it and make sure we only navigate to the last press click. As you can see, this gets kind of uh, involved pretty quickly, which again is why I like the on mouse enter approach we did at the beginning. It doesn't touch with the links. We don't have to call prevent default. Next is still in control of routing for us and the router state machine bit is taken care of. So that's really nice. But I did want to point that out because if you've been watching any of my videos on concurrent React, um, we have this API coming to us in React 18 called start transition. And it's actually partially designed to solve exactly this case. So uh, if you come and actually look at some of the original docs talking about the motivation for transitions, uh, you'll see that we have a demo where we click next to switch the active profile. And they say that the existing page data immediately disappears and we see the loading indicator for the whole page. We call this an undesirable loading state and uh, it would be nice if we could skip it and wait for some content to load before transitioning to the new screen. And this is what use transition is all about. So I just wanted to mention that because uh, some folks have been telling me it's been nice, even if they're not really getting into some of the new APIs, the more exper experimental stuff that's coming to React, it's good to kind of just uh, dip your toes in it and understand what problems it solves. And it turns out this problem that we just tackled is actually going to be something that is covered by some of these new concurrent mode APIs coming to React 18. So I thought that was just a nice little tidbit there at the end. But uh, if you do want to be able to do things like this in Next.js, it's good to get comfortable using the router on your own and whatever data fetching library you're using, it's nice to become a little bit more adept with manipulating the cache on your own so you can do stuff like uh, warm the cache on hover by prefetching for a specific cache key right there. So uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and if not, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.